Hey everyone, my name is Johnny. I'm from uh, Flexible Digital Urban Modeling class of 2013 uh, with uh, Dr. Marcus White. And today I'm going to show you how to uh, create multiple suns so that when you're probably designing either, I guess, a landscape or a building, you can get an idea of um, where the shadow is going to fall uh, at multiple times within the day. Um, and then link these suns together so that you can you can move through the months and all the suns will change um, together. All right, so as you can see that I've got um, I've set up my basic cityscape. This is using uh, the Greeble plugin, so you can uh, search for this on Google and um, yeah, download it and install it, and it's pretty easy to um, to set up a basic city like this. Um, you can, yeah, but we're not going to cover that in this tutorial. You can see that I've kind of set up a basic road and what I want to do is be able to see what what the shadows, um, what shadows are cast during multiple times within the day. So I'm going to start by quickly creating a new sun. So you find this under um, create and systems so um, we're going to use a daylight so it's not sunlight it's daylight and yes and now I'm going to draw out my compass you might want to rotate this if, um, if you needed to to um, so it's correct but we're just going to stick with the uh, default yep and we're going to create a mint uh, mental ray sky, yes. And then you can just you drag out the your sun. Okay, so we have sun number one. And what I want to what I want to do is change the uh, position of this sun so it's um, correct to where I am in Melbourne. So you first go to setup and uh, get location. So I'll change for me I'll change it to Australia, Melbourne, okay. And now you can see that uh, the sun position is where it should be for uh, what are we? This, this must be the um, our shortest day, so the middle of winter on June 21st at uh, midday. So I'm going to start by changing the hours to maybe we'll start with 7 a.m. because I don't think we really need to go much earlier than that. 7. Okay, and you can see that in winter at 7 a.m. the sun isn't even on. Uh, it hasn't even risen yet. There it is there. Okay, so I'm gonna, then I'm, what I'm going to do is select my, um, my compass and my sun and I want to duplicate this. So I'm going to do, let's call it compass 2, okay. Um, We'll just make it a copy. So now I'm going to select Daylight 2. You can see it here, or you could use the um, Select by Name tool up here, which we might use later when it gets a bit more crowded. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one to, to 8 o'clock. Alright, and I'm going to keep doing that. And then I'll do that to nine o'clock.
Okay, so we should have the right amount of sun. So we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so now what we want to do, um, you can see that they're all on the same day on the 21st of June. Um, but when I select the first one and I change the, uh, the, the date, it changes by itself. And what we really want to do is I want to be able to change the month and have all, um, all of the suns move together. So what we use is called parameter wiring. So you first you can go up to anim animation. Um, and this is for a 2014 version of 3D Studio Max, but it, it may be different for uh, earlier versions, I'm not sure. So animation, wire parameters, and open parameter wire dialog. You can use, um, you can also use Alt-5. Okay, so what we have here is we have um, a list of everything in our scene. Um, and the ability to wire between uh, different objects. So I'll scroll down in the first one, and you can see here we go, daylight one, um, and it's it's sort of it's got its properties open already. I guess it's because I've got it selected. And what I want to do is I want to um, you can see here it's a solar date, um, and I want to be I want to link this to um, my second sun. So I'll scroll down in this one and I'll open up Compass 2. And expand that with the plus and then um, I think it's just this, this um, little plus here in the circle to open up its, its, um, its location parameters. And then I'm gonna select um, its location date. And I think I wanna make it, click this one to make it a two-way connection. So I guess that means if I change uh, either one, it's gonna change both. Okay, so let's see if that worked. So I've got number one selected, and now I change the month, and that didn't work, right. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so I've got, yep, I see what happened, I need to, I obviously need to uh, click connect, there we go, this should work now, there we go, so you can see that as I change the month, both of the suns are moving together, which is what we want, so I'm going to quickly, uh, go through and link all of them. Um, maybe I'll do that and get back to you so you don't have to watch um, how boring it is. Okay, see you soon. Okay, hey, right, welcome back. Um, so I've left one more to, um, to do so that you um, yeah, can see how it's done again. So you can use um, Alt-5. Alt-5 to open up uh, the parameter wire, wiring uh, tools. Um, scroll down to find, um, in this case, it's my daylight one that I'm using as my, um, my master. And I'm using the solar date. Scrolling down to, to my, last, um, my last daylight. So that's daylight under compass, 11, and then daylight clicking the, um, the plus in the small circle, and then choosing solar date, clicking the two-way connection, click connect, and we are done. We, we should be able to select any of our suns. So I'll select this one, daylight six, and um, change the month. You can see that all the suns will, uh, will move in the correct uh, trajectories according to that month. You notice that we can't actually see any of the, um, the shadows, so what we need to do is go up to um, 
the viewport sort of options up here and change it to unrealistic, which you can see it's casting shadows, but it's not really casting the uh, correct shadows. So you, you need to go down and change and the lighting and shadows change it to illuminate with scene lights rather than the default lights. Right, so now you can see, if you zoom in a bit, you can see that when I change these in the month, and I may be a bit slow on this computer, you can see that it's kind of casting shadows um, in the correct um, directions. Maybe if I do a quick render. And you can see that it's, um, it's pretty bright, I guess, because we have 11 suns. And in a world with 11 suns, it would be pretty bright. So why don't I cancel this and then um, we'll try and tone the lights down a bit so uh, so that we can um, actually see shadows. Alright, so I might start by selecting daylight one. So we'll go to day daylight one and I will um, change it's multiplier, I think, to say, let's say, at a guess, point 0.1. And um, I'll go through and do that to uh, all of our, um, all of our sums. Okay, so I've done most of them. It's going to do this last one. So I'm changing the modifier, sorry, the multiplier to point 0.1. You can see that the whole scene got it just a little bit darker. Um, you may need to render it. You can see uh, the shadows um, showing up now. I'll render it, see if it's so bright. Yeah, so it's looking a, um, it's looking a bit better. And I guess what this allows you to do is um, see um, the darkest places, the places of um, the most shadow over the whole day, and then the brightest places are the surfaces that see the most intense light. And um, yeah, so using this technique, you'd be able to um, check check your design and see how it's um, seeing how how much sunlight is reaching um, different surfaces uh, throughout the day. So uh, there we have it. How do you um, how to link the properties of or the parameters of multiple suns so you can uh, move it, move them uh, all together within the scene. Cool, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thanks for watching.